So the corticosteroids are the next portion in our BAM and SLAM. We're going to be talking about how corticosteroids uh, like prednisone, like uh, sulimedrol specifically, uh, help to decrease the inflammation of the, of the uh, major pathways. So that's why we separate this into our anti-inflammatory team. This is our SLAM team. So for your corticosteroids, these usually end in zone, S-O-N. Or sometimes they end in zone, sometimes they end in just one. So a good way to remember these is and identify them is just looking at the, the suffix. Just like PM anticholinergic, because it helps you pee with them, right? Fill in. Methylosanthine, you fill in it, right? Uh, okay. And then your terol, like your albuterol. So it's that beta 2 antagonist, okay? For your zone is your steroids, like your prednisone, or your sulimedrol, which um, is a brand name, but your generic name that it's like saying soda instead of Coca Cola. Your generic name is your methylprednisolone, <laughs> and it ends with own. So we got it, own. Cool. So how do these work? Now I know we did another video about this, but specifically for the lungs, it helps to de-inflamate things. Inflammate. <laughs> it helps to de-inflame your lungs. So if these are your lungs right here. We know that inside your lungs, there are pretty much branches that go out like this, right? And it looks like branches, and you have little uh, arterioles at the end, arterioles, what am I saying? You have little uh, alveoli at the end. And there's so many things that can go wrong with those little alveoli. That's a whole nother lecture where we're going to get into atelectasist. Uh, actually, I did a little lecture about that in terms of um, post-op patients. Getting all that sedation out of those little alveoli and really using that incentive spirometer to pop open those alveoli. Increase perfusion. But we're not talking about that right now. <laughs> okay, so your corticosteroids. What happens is you have inflammation on the branches of your lungs. So you have big inflammation, which causes a backup of airflow. Or sometimes no airflow at all and that no airflow is going to suffocate your patient. Remember, remember, I keep on saying it. Oxygen is the money of the body. Without oxygen and your body goes broke, you will die. So everything that goes wrong in the body, nine times out of 10, is always related to an oxygenation issue. So, Let's get these lungs to be better, um, accept oxygen better. So the inflammation process usually happens because these prostaglandins and all these other type of allergy or inflammatory responses that are natural in the body, like we have histamines, we have prostaglandins that cause pain, we also have something called substance P, and then we also have COX-1 and COX-2. All these guys are just different inflammatory responses. It's almost like confetti. If there's an allergic reaction or if you have, for some reason your, your body doesn't like something, it'll pop these confetti pieces 
and that's inflammation and all these little pieces come out and that's your prostaglandins that's your cox1 cox2 your substance p your histamines and they all just cause inflammation and puffiness so your adrenal glands are supposed to kick into action and cause de-inflammation but sometimes we'll have adrenal fatigue adrenal insufficiency I had asthma when I was little and I was put on prednisone didn't mean that I had adrenal insufficiency didn't mean that I had bad adrenal glands all that meant was that I had too much inflammation so my adrenals were doing the best they could but they couldn't do it good enough so um, they put me on a little disc that I had to inhale and bring all that prednisone down into my lungs one of the things that they taught me before I take my prednisone was to take my albuterol inhaler to bronchodilate me and so I can get that um, <laughs> I can get that steroid down into my lungs a little better so instead of sucking in all that steroid and have it accumulate in the back of my throat or on the sides uh, maybe in just just my bronchi itself not the bronchioles you give that bronchodilator first expand the airways so you can breathe it in and everything absorbs better so it's kind of cool so um, it's going to treat your inflammation your inflammatory uh, inflammation for your lungs so your inflammatory conditions you know that COPD that asthma that's chronic these um, these steroids act very very slow too so it's like the last line therapy it's almost like the lantus of insulin like 24 hour relief it's gonna last a long time but it's gonna decrease that inflammation so as we give this it's gonna suppress our immune system it's going to suppress those prostaglandins so we're talking about a suppressed immune system with prednisone steroids suppress the immune system and that's a lovely question to always put on tests nursing instructors love to put prednisone which patient would you assess first or which patient is most at risk for infection someone on prednisone of course it's always going to be the prednisone person or it's going to be the chemo person who's undergoing chemotherapy because they're also immune suppressed killing off those white blood cells um, patients on prednisone and patients on chemotherapy both have immunosuppression but on different levels okay so I'm not saying that they're the, I'm not making a connection it's just on different levels both are immunosuppressed but with prednisone we are causing that immunosuppression from the steroid that we're taking in our body we're telling those adrenal glands that um, we are taking over so some things you have to remember from last lecture is that it's going to cause increased blood sugar it's going to cause fluid retention because it's acting like that aldosterone steroid that's going to retain fluid in the distal kidney tubules it's also going to cause increased muscle weakness and also talking about the kidneys again possibly a uh, potassium loss with fluid retention so that's in a nutshell uh, prednisone and your zone corticosteroids so let's go into leukotrienes next and singular